Okay, so today we're going to look at some more probability of compound events. And so in order to do so, let's make sure we have some definitions straight in our heads. First one we're going to look at, we're going to look at trials. And what trials are, are simply the total number of times that experiment is repeated. Okay, so if the example is uh, someone at a free throw line shooting baskets for a free throw, each time he throws the ball is considered a trial. Outcomes, the next one. Well, if you throw the free throw, there's two possible outcomes. You either sink it or you miss it. It's the possible results from one trial, the experiment. So you can have, it's all the results that could happen in this one trial. Frequency talks about how often you do it. So if I sink my basket 10 times, then the frequency of a successful sink and basket is 10 times. Relative frequency, well, that just makes this frequency as a percentage of the total of trials that you do. Sample space gives all the possibilities that are possible. So if I take five free throws, my sample space would be zero misses or zero hit. Or if I, my success is sink the ball, so it's zero sinking the ball, one sink the ball, two sink the ball, three, four, or five sinking the balls. So those are my entire possible outcomes, and it consists considers them all. And I used to think this was really kind of silly when I was younger and a student, but the more I do it, the more I realize that thinking about what the actual outcomes are is really important. And then we have our theoretical probability. That's what should happen on theory. And that's as if you take all the possible numbers of successes, possible desirable outcomes, over the possible outcomes, that gives you your theoretical probability. We also know that probabilities have to be between zero and one. That's always true. It cannot be more than one. It cannot be less than zero. And a complementary event discusses ideas of I, complementary means a prime is a good notation, but the event and not the event always add up to one. So if I subtract one, if I subtract p a, I end up with this equation. So the idea of if I am throwing my free throws, if I do it six times or five times, and I have two successes, my success is two fifths, and so my not success is three fifths. Together they add up to one. If you know one, you can get the other. All right, so those are some definitions for us to think about. All right, so now in a deck of seven cards, or in a deck of cards, give the probably each event. Well, once upon a time, everyone knew cards, but in case you don't know cards, here is what a deck of cards looks like. There are ace to king in four different suits, clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. And there's 50, so there's 13 of each suit. Uh, each suit has all the same kind of numbers, and there's four of them. So in total, there's 52 cards. So if I'm looking for the probability of a seven of spades, well, I know I have this one card out of 52. If I'm looking for the probability of a queen, of all these cards, if I randomly select one, I have four queens here, and so it's four out of a total of 52, or I could simplify that to one out of 13. Okay, so now, if I'm gonna find a face card, the probability of a face card, well, of all these, I know these are the, the face cards down here, and there's 12 of them in total, so it's 12, divided by 52, which is the same as 3 out of 13. A non-face card, well, that's going to be 1 minus the probability of a face card, which I know is 1 minus 3 out of 13. Oh, 13, which is going to be 10 out of 13. Probably the heart, well, I have all these 13 hearts. It's 13 out of 52, or one quarter. 
and then uh, a probability of a 7 or a 2. Now, or, another way I could write it is a probability of a 7 or a 2. And this typically means to add. So here's a 7. I got four possibilities for a 7, and I have four possibilities for a 2. So I'm going to add the 4 plus 4 all out of 52. So it's equal to 8 out of 52, which is 4 out of 26, which is 2 out of 13, which is the 2 cards out of the 13. And so here's how we can, this is the entire sample space, and seeing all the outcomes helps to create these things. This or is important, it means add or union. So now I want the probability of a heart or a queen. Well, if I look if I look at my hands that are possible, here are my four queens. Right? There are my four queens. Here are all my hearts. Okay? And so if I go four queens, there's four out of 52, plus, well, one, two, there's 13 out of 52. But here's the problem. This queen here, I counted twice. So I have to subtract one out of 52. And so when I do that, I get 16 out of 52. And so what happens is I'm going to introduce you to what we call the general formula. And here's the general formula, the scenario here. A or B is a probability of A minus the probability of A and B. This region here, A and B, that's this 1 out of 52. It's the overlap region. The reason why we subtract it because we counted one of them in here and we counted it again in here. So really there's a queen of hearts here and a queen of hearts here. We've counted one card two times, so we have to subtract it away. That's the idea of this general formula. That's what this here means. Subtract the overlap. Here is it with symbolic notation. And so the union of A and B is the probability of A plus probability minus the intersection, the overlap region. And this is the general rule. From the events above, so all our cards, state two events which are mutually exclusive or disjoint. Well, in order to answer this question, you need to know what these two words mean. Mutually exclusive means two events are mutually exclusive if they have no outcomes in common, or they cannot occur at the same time. So selecting an even number or selecting a one from a set of numbers is mutually exclusive. Or if I consider a high school, Right? If I want to select someone who is in grade 9 and someone who is in grade 12, this is mutually exclusive because I cannot do it at the same time. There's no overlap region. So if I consider of my events above, mutually exclusive would be the probability of the 7, the probability of the 2. These two events choose in a 7 and choose in a 2 are mutually exclusive. The ones that are not mutually exclusive could have been the probability of a heart or a queen because there was an overlap region here. The queen of hearts was the overlap and so it was mutually not mutually exclusive whereas these ones were because I had all my 7s and all my 2s. There was no overlap. So that is mutually exclusive. Let's try a new example. A chocolate is selected from a box at random. Probably it contains nuts is 0.25. And so I'm going to do some notation probably of nuts is equal to 0.25. And I get in a habit of using good notation because the notation sometimes will save me when I'm stuck. And so I want the probability of carnal is also going to be one third. 
and the product contains nuts and caramel nuts and caramel is one sixth I want to find the probability of two of nuts or so I'm looking for the probability of nuts or caramel well using our formula from here we know it's probably of a plus b minus the overlap region here and so it's going to be the probability of nuts plus the probability of caramel minus the intersection or the overlap of the two which is one quarter plus one third minus one sixth uh, adding these together I'm going to make a common denominator, a denominator of 12 so that's 3 twelfths plus 4 twelfths minus uh, 2 twelfths which will end up being 7 minus 2 is 5 twelfths now B part are the nuts and caramel mutually exclusive well is there an overlap can my chocolate have both nuts and caramel at the same time the answer is yes they can so therefore they are not mutually exclusive because they can happen at the same time as they can happen at the same time draw a vendor and two events that are mutually exclusive well here's event a and here's the event b and there's no overlap so if two events are mutually exclusive then the intersection of a and b equals zero so from our general formula we know that this is true minus the overlap region but if I know that they're mutually exclusive this is zero and so the probability of a union b is just probability of a plus the probability of b we already know that this is equal to zero so it ends up just being this and that is a formula that is in your formula booklet another example group of 50 students there are 26 who study latin 15 greek and 8 who take both draw a venn diagram well here's my latin people here are my greeks and in studying or working with these venn diagrams the key is to get the center filled out first if possible 8 take both 26 study latin well there's 8 of them already counted for so that means there must be 18 together is 26 18 who just do latin only and if there's 15 who do greek well 8 are counted for so 7 must be left over in total this whole total has to add up to 50 well I know that I have together I have 26 plus 37 is 33 so if I 33 minus 50 I can see that out here 17 people do not study either so this is all 50 people accounted for and B says find the probability that a student chosen at random does not study either language that means they do not study Latin and they do not study Greek that's this region here where they intersect that's 17 out of 50 and in probability you can leave it as fractions or decimals or percentage either ones as fine okay using this problem here given two events a and b I know the probability of a the probability of the inter or the union and the probability of the intersection well if I use my formula which is this one I can just plug my values in I know this is 11 sixteenths this is 3 out of 8 plus x minus 3 sixteenths well I know that this is the same as 6 
out of 16. And so if I know this is 11 sixteenths is equal to 3 sixteenths plus x. So x is equal to minus the 3 sixteenths gives me 8 the sixteenth, which is one half. And so the probability of B is equal to one half based upon our formula. Okay, a group of music students discuss who plays violin, who plays piano. Try this problem on your own and then check to see if your answer is right. Okay, here's my violin. Here is my piano. It is a 23 play both violin. Uh, because these are percentages, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that they are actually counts out of 100. So this is really 23 people out of 100. This is only piano, so 46 out of 100. 10 play neither. And so I know that these values have to add up to 100. So if I need to find what is just violin, 100 minus 23 minus 46 minus 10 ends up with there are 21 people here. These four numbers add up to a total of 100, which is the percentage. And so if I'm looking for how many people play violin, or piano? Well, violin or piano is going to be all the people in these regions here. And so I add them all up, or I could subtract 10. That's the same thing as saying 1 minus 10 out of 100, which is actually going to be 90 out of 100, which is 0.9. And so there's the introductory to some of these complementary events.